Hey everyone, Andrew back for another Priest of Basics video. So yes, as you can see, I am back in my regular setup for today. I am in my room. Um, I'm not sure if my phone's microphone will pick this up, but right outside my window here, it is super crazy windy out. Like, kind of hard to stand out there windy. So I, of course, I'm not gonna film outside in that. And which kind of threw a wrench in the works because I was planning on, of course, filming outside because the weather is pretty agreeable besides that. It's pretty warm out. Um, but yeah, so not being able to film outside today sort of um, shifted my plans a bit and as a result also changed the topic that I was planning for today. Um, so since I'm inside in my room again, I figured we might as well throw it all the way back to good old cheat sheet days. <laughs> yes, we're going to have the return of the cheat sheet in this episode. And I was thinking of a new topic that would be appropriate. Um, you know, a topic that maybe has a bit more complicated information, a part of it that would be appropriate for this OG video format. And so as you can tell from the title, the topic I've decided on for this week is caffeine and what exactly caffeine is. Now, obviously, throughout this series, I have spoken a lot about caffeine, mentioned it quite a few times, but I've never really gone in depth into what exactly caffeine is. So let's get into it. <laughs> um, cheat sheet time. I know I, <sighs> we're back. It's, we're back to basics here, man. So I actually, today's a little bit different too, because I actually have two cheat sheets here because I have so much information, mainly due to drawing this molecule here, molecule here that I couldn't fit it all on one sheet, which is something I try to do, but clearly not successful today. So I hope that, you know, we're okay with a two cheat sheet kind of day. <laughs> but anyways, enough um, procrastinating, let's get into the topic. Okay, what exactly is caffeine? So caffeine is uh, classified as a methylxanthine which is a derivative of xanthine, uh, which is a purine base. Uh, oh, actually, something I meant to say before I started giving you this information is that I am no by means a chemist. The last time I took chemistry was sophomore year of high school, actually, so I'm pretty far removed from it, so I don't know a lot of the super in-depth stuff, but this is kind of as in-depth as I've gotten. So please forgive me if this information seems pretty shallow because like I said, I don't know a lot of in-depth information. Anyways, I'm just making excuses. So it is, um, right, a methyl xanthine, which is a derivative of xanthine, which essentially it gets that classification due to its chemical compound, its molecular structure, which I have drawn um, as you can see right here. Um, and of course, this classification, its structure, affects um, not only how it interacts with other chemicals, but also um, parts of your body, which we will get into very briefly. So, um, in general, methyl xanthines affect not only your airways, but also stimulate your heart rate and the rate of contraction. Obviously, the rate of contraction of your heart. Now, sort of how caffeine affects us on a molecular level is that it blocks um, an adenosine, sorry, it blocks adenosine, which is um, a chemical compound that is commonly associated with drowsiness. So essentially, this caffeine molecule will, um, what's the word, like, bind to, gosh, see, chemistry, I don't even know her anymore. This caffeine molecule will bind to um, some of the adenosine res res receptors, <laughs> Lord help me, some of these receptors. So obviously if the caffeine is taking over that receptor, then the adenosine cannot bind to it. And so of course, if adenosine can't bind to its receptor and it's commonly associated with drowsiness, then caffeine will counteract this effect. Um, yeah, and then so moving downward, as we can see, that is the caffeine molecule, as I just previously mentioned. I can't really tell you much about um, its structure. I know that it's an organic molecule, and 
that's about it. So that's what it looks like. <laughs> um, but regarding what I have written on the bottom here, this is um, sort of a more colloquial, a more common way to think about caffeine. This is how I have always thought about caffeine in the past, um, meaning that how I've known it is as a stimulant. And um, it's a stimulant that affects your central nervous system, which essentially is just your brain and your spinal cord. So that is um, all of the information presented on my first cheat sheet here. That's sort of the more um, chemistry, kind of sciency focused information. And this next cheat sheet is sort of more so focuses on some recommendations, some of the effects of caffeine, and also a pretty interesting fact. So we can go ahead and show off this next cheat sheet as well. This is so weird having two cheat sheets, I know. Um, but to move on, our first point I have written down here is that this was actually unbeknownst to me. I knew it was a drug, but it is a psychoactive drug, which is um, just a fancy word for something, a chemical substance more specifically, that alters your brain function. So yes, we all knew that caffeine was a drug, but um, technically, I mean, it's not classified in the same like level as other psychoactive drugs, like you know, psychedelics or cocaine or, you know, these other hard illegal drugs. But it is interesting to note that it is technically a psychoactive drug because, of course, it affects how our brain functions. So that was just a pretty um, fun fact that I discovered and I found pretty um, surprising. Um, so good for caffeine for being legal. Um, Moving on, we have here that it is not, this is sort of what I mentioned earlier about um, a recommendation. It's not really recommended for children and adolescents. Obviously not that children really need caffeine anyways because <laughs> they are pretty energetic as it is. Um, and I also have, I rec you know, when I was a kid, I remember hearing all the time that Caffeine will stunt your child's growth, and I have done some research on that, obviously, um, and I've discovered that there's, it's, that's not a fact, per se. There's a lot of speculation surrounding it, um, but many of the sources that I found said that it actually does not um, stunt growth, which is interesting, kind of a popular myth debunked there. So, of course, it's not really recommended for children and adolescents or uh, pregnant women as well. Of course, pregnant women can have caffeine as long as it is less than 200 milligrams per day. Um, this is also something that has some contention behind it. There are some sources that I read stating that um, it has these various negative effects on a child, on the obviously the infant that isn't born yet. Um, that it can negatively impact them, but I've also seen other sources that say it doesn't really have an effect, but I would just err on the side of caution and consume less than this 200 milligrams. But also, I'm not a pregnant woman, nor will I ever be, so I can't really tell you how much caffeine to consume. We can only make recommendations, right? So that those were some sort of interesting facts about caffeine. Now we can get into probably what you clicked on the video for, some of the effects of caffeine. Now most of these effects are familiar to us, but there are also some interesting ones that I discovered. So of course, caffeine, sorry, I am been so itchy lately. Caffeine, of course, helps to reduce um, fatigue and drowsiness, which um, conversely, it means that it promotes alertness and increased attention span, which is information that probably everybody knew. But something that I found interesting is this next bullet point here, which is that it actually can enhance athletic performance as well as muscular strength, power, and endurance. This was something that I wasn't really aware of. I'm not entirely sure why it helps increase athletic performance. I guess just it just provides more energy for you. But I think another fact to note here is that, of course, physical activity on its own is very energy consuming and very dehydrating. And caffeine, as I've mentioned in the past, is a diuretic, meaning that it dehydrates you and 
what makes you use the bathroom more, which in turn dehydrates you. So if you plan on using caffeine to sort of, I guess, enhance your athletic performance, drinking water is even more vital than it would originally be. So be sure to do that if you do that. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that's it on the uh, main effects of caffeine on our body. And this last bullet point here is something, uh, another interesting fact that I discovered today. And that is that there is in fact a term called caffeinism which is, um, on average, the daily consumption of caffeine between 1,000 and 1,500 milligrams. I guess, of course, this definition could exceed 1,500 milligrams, but I guess that's sort of the average amount that scientists have stated that would classify as caffeinism. But what exactly is caffeinism? So caffeinism is associated with increased dependence on caffeine and of course, well, because caffeine's a drug, of course, so you can obviously become dependent on it if you have too much of it too often, too frequently. So some of the sort of withdrawal symptoms, I guess you could say, since, you know, if you become dependent on a drug and you no longer take the drug, at all or in the same capacity you did in the past, of course there are going to be some adverse effects of that, more commonly known as withdrawal symptoms, like I just said. And so some of these include um, irritability, uh, nervousness, insomnia, as well as an increase in the number and severity of headaches. Whew, gosh, I have not spoken that much in a minute Actually, I have, that's a lie. But anyways, I feel <laughs> pretty exhausted right now after um, going through that whole spiel. <sighs> so yes, let me catch my breath. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> I hope that you guys learned something. Sorry if this video was kind of weird. Again, I haven't done this format in a minute, so I kind of felt a little bit like a robot. And... I hope that wasn't too noticeable, or at least not too distracting if it was noticeable. I, of course, would like to thank you guys for checking the video out. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of throwback video format, and I hope that you are staying safe, healthy, sane, entertained, you know, of course, continuing to practice our um, safety corona procedures. And I also hope that we are continuing to stay at home. <laughs> I am still in South Carolina, obviously, and the governor actually extended the stay-at-home mandate, which I think is pretty interesting considering the fact that he just very recently opened up some non-essential businesses, but that's tea for another day. I'm not here to get into a whole political thing, but yeah, I just thought that was pretty funny to note. Clearly, we should heed what scientists and experts are saying and continue to stay at home to decrease the spread of this virus. So please continue to do that. Please continue to stay safe. And yeah, that's it for me. Jupiter has some things to say as well, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, we would like to bid you guys farewell. Um, I appreciate you for checking the video out. And yeah, I will see you guys uh, next week for um, the next Barista Basics episode, of course. Um, I mentioned this last week as well with my last Coffee Talk video, but I'm not entirely sure if I am going to upload this week still. I am in the process of moving. I'm kind of really in the heat of it now, so things are a little chaotic at the moment, but I hope that I will have time tomorrow to at least record one episode. I may very well try to record all three episodes tomorrow, but again, we shall see. I will certainly keep you guys updated on that, and I hope you stay tuned. If not for those episodes, then for the Barista Basics video next week. Okay, I've spent like three minutes now closing out this video. I'm so sorry. I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Thank you.